The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to gather with you to worship this morning as we continue walking through Lent together. With St. Patrick's Day later this week, uh, we're going to be drawing on some of his words, his prayers in our liturgy today. Um, Probably would have been easier next week, but next week is Mother's Day, so we're going to draw on St. Patrick today. And so let's begin with a call to worship inspired by Patrick's breastplate. We arise and come before God today, trusting in God's strength to direct us, God's might to uphold us, God's wisdom to guide us, God's eye to see before us, God's ear to hear us, God's word to speak to us, God's hand to guard us, God's way to go before us, God's shield to protect us, God's presence to secure us. May Christ ever be before us, behind us, in us, beneath us, above us, on our right and on our left. Salvation is found in Christ. Amen. And so with that beautiful prayer in mind, let's turn in our hymn books to hymn number 12. And we'll continue on that theme as we sing, God is our strength and refuge, our present help in trouble. Hymn number 12, we'll stand to sing. As we remain standing, let's turn to page 101 in our green prayer books, page 37 if you're using the large print. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. So let's take our seats to confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, 
We have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand together. O Lord, open our lips. God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. We continue in worship as we sing hymn 372. 372 through all the changing scenes of life.
Do take your seats. Our Bible reading, our Old Testament Bible reading, is selected verses from Isaiah chapter 40, an incredible passage, Isaiah chapter 40. We begin at verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard surface has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. From verse 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And then from verse 21. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. So why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. So we've sung Psalm 46 and 34, I think, and we're going to sing now, or no, we're not, we're going to speak out Psalm 95, Psalm 95, page 702 in our prayer books, page 420, if you're using the large print, Psalm 95. So this morning we'll speak out Psalm 95 by alternate verse. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O 
when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray for ourselves and for Norman as he comes to speak to us from that passage in Isaiah 40. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you that you have the words of eternal life, that your words are treasures. They are full of hope and encouragement. And I pray for us today that our hearts would be open to receive these treasures. As Norman speaks to us, Lord, would you bless him and bless us in Jesus' name. Good morning. I want to use your imagination, get you to use your imagination a wee bit at the start of the, the sermon. Imagine yourself, you're in a bus journey up around the Moran Mountains, and you are at the top of Spelgadam. You're at Spelgadam, and the hill runs down towards Hill, hill, hill Town Road. It's a very steep hill, I don't know if you know it, but there's a very steep hill and a sweeping left bend at the bottom. So you're there, you're enjoying this trip. It's been nice and warm and comfortable, cosy fellowship, cosy sort of company. But suddenly, terror breaks into the situation because the driver has taken a heart attack. And you realise he can't stop the bus, he can't slow the bus down. And you're, like the other passengers in the boat, terrified at the thought of ever-increasing speed to destruction and that sweeping left-hand band down to the bottom and then down into the river Ban as it spurts. Not a situation you'd want to be in. But a situation that would ask you, make you ask questions as to who's in charge here. Who's in charge in this situation? You can blame the driver, but he's taken a heart attack. Who's in charge? Is anybody else in charge? Nobody's in charge. We're on the way to destruction. There's nobody in charge. We're going to be killed. We're going to be wrecked. We're going to be ruined. Can you imagine that situation? Not an unusual one. You'd be asking the question, has nobody any power to stop this? Nobody any power to control this. Is God no power to stop this? Is God no power to control this? Is God too weak to do anything about this? Poses questions of God's power, or in this circumstance, you may well be an entity, 
poses questions about God's weakness. Another situation. You're in an aeroplane, you're flying over the Atlantic at 33,000 feet, and everything seems cosy. You're comfortable, you're at ease, you're relaxed in the plane. But suddenly there's a bang on the right-hand side. You look out and you're shocked to the core of your being because the engines are going on fire. The engine's gone on fire. You think to yourself, well, my goodness, thank goodness for the pilot. My, thank goodness for the pilot. He's in control of this. He knows what to do. He's got his hands on the switch and on the controls. We're not going to be destroyed. And then there's another bang. This time the other engine's out on the other side. And you're even more panicky than you were before. You're even more terrified than you were before. But you feel the pilot knows what he's doing. They're prepared for this sort of situation. It's not unusual. The pilot's going to care enough about it and he's got enough control to bring things back to order. But then you look out through the window with a few other people and you see two parachutes. You realise the pilot's bailed out and his co-pilot with him. And you're left on your own. You're abandoned. You're betrayed. These people were given the job of looking after you and protecting you and getting you safely over the Atlantic. And they betrayed you. And they're trying to save their own skins. They're not interested in you. You feel heartless, you feel angry, you feel betrayed. They make you ask questions about God. Does God care? Or has God betrayed us like these two guys in the parachutes floating down? They're questions that the Bible poses. Is God powerful enough to handle things in the world, in Israel, in among the people, is God powerful enough? Can he handle it? Or are the situations too big for him to handle? Is God in control or is nobody in control? And even if God is in control, does God care? God has the power to do something about it, but God, does he care enough to do something about it? We feel God knows how to stop this. We feel God knows how to turn this around. We feel in our being that God is able to do something about it. But does he care enough to do it? Or is he simply going to betray us the way the Titans have, and even worse so? We feel abandoned. We feel unloved, uncared for. In a very real situation, we're all at times facing those kind of questions. But the Bible faces the questions far more powerfully and far more challengingly than we do even. Isaiah chapter 40 is a magnificent piece of scripture, wonderful piece of scripture, full of glorious stuff about the gospel, a box of delights in so many ways. But it deals with those big questions. In the midst of knowing God and his love and his mercy and his greatness and these great words in the Bible, is God part of doing anything about things? Is God powerful enough to change things? Does God love us? Does the Lord love us enough to do things to rescue us? Or is he just going to betray us and leave us to our defeat the way that he, he, the pilots did in the airplane? Well, in a sense, Isaiah chapter 40 answers some of those questions. The rest of the Bible is full of answers. Don't think those are strange questions to ask or wrong questions to ask. The Bible is full of those questions. Not least the Psalms constantly get asking those questions. Does God care? Does God, is God strong enough to handle situations? Well, Isaiah 40 lets us see that part of the response of the people of Israel to this situation, when those questions are posed by Isaiah the prophet, part of the response is the people complain. The people basically just moan and groan about it all. Here's, they basically are those questions there and the questions are answered by God. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? The people of Israel 
pity that God wasn't powerful enough to handle their situation because they've been overrun by the Babylonians. The people of Israel who feel God doesn't care about us, he's abandoned us, he's betrayed us. Turn to God in complaint. Complain thy way is hidden from the Lord, thy cause is disregarded by my God. The Bible is full of those questions. And thankfully for the answers too. And Isaiah 40 begins, that was verse 27, I was reading, Isaiah 40 begins by showing us that the Lord cares, by telling us that the Lord's powerful, by enabling us to see that he cares enough to speak to us and address us and bring us his answers. Isaiah 40, verse 1, familiar words in the Bible, familiar words in music about the Bible. Comfort, says the Lord, comfort my people. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In those awful times when we feel God can't do anything about this, he's not powerful enough. In those awful times when we feel even if God is powerful enough, he's not doing anything, does he care? We turn to the Bible. And we find written in big print, broadcast across the universe. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. That's broadcast across the universe. When God's people cry and complain to him, God answers them with this message about comfort. You've got to be careful here, for comfort's a strong word in the Bible. It's not a cozy word. It's not a nice, cozy blanket sort of word. It's not something that you can just lie about and relax in. That's not the sort of comfort the Bible's talking about. It's strong stuff. It's spine strengthening stuff. It's giving his backbone sort of stuff to cope with the crisis. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to her. Proclaim to her that her heart's service has been completed. That her sin has been paid for. The God who speaks comfort to Israel and has brought judgment upon them is now saying to them, that sin has been paid for. Sin is dealt with. Sin is removed. That she has received from the Lord's hands double for all her sins. That's an awkward verse in many senses. That's an awkward statement to understand. Received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. What does that actually mean? Well, scholars struggle with it. Have done all the centuries. To me, the right sort of direction for it, that I understand it, like multitudes of others before me, that I understand it, is when you sin against God, either as an individual or as a family sin or in a church or in a community or in a city or in a country like Israel, you lose so much when you sin against God. You lose so much. God withdraws his presence and you lose so much. But here's a message not about judgment. This is a message about restoration, following judgment. And it's this sim- simply saying this, not simply, but it's saying this. She's received in the Lord's hands double for her sins. Not just does the Lord restore what the locusts have eaten, He restores it beyond that. He's abundant in His restoring. He gives great grace, He gives great riches out of His grace. That's the Lord's comfort coming to us. Comfort that strengthens us and upholds us. Comfort that God restores us and refreshes and renews us. Comfort. Real comfort. The complaint is unjustified. Although at times you might feel justified in complaining. But ultimately if you examine it, the complaint is unjustified. Because we're told that God is all-powerful and knows what to do with his power. The pictures are there. There's too many of the pictures in Isaiah chapter 40 to look at them all, but Isaiah chapter 40 has the pictures of the God, of God being like a, the creator of the universe. He call, brings the stars out in the morning time and brings them out into, uh, on display and that one of them will be missing. He sits enthroned above the heavens, above the circle of the earth, and the people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. God calls us to understand these things, that he's behind it, 
I'm involved in it and he's not ignoring you. Lift up your eyes and see, says the Lord. Lift up your eyes to all that's around you. God has made all this. He's powerful enough. He's wonderful enough. God has made it all. He's the creator of the universe. He's the creator of the stars. He calls the stars by name and brings them out and not one of them is missing. Not one of them is, is over, overlooked. God's in control of the nations. He's more powerful than they are. God's in control of the rulers. He's more powerful than they are. They're like dust in his hand. Just blows them away. God is powerful enough. God is caring enough to do something about it. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. That's who God is. And God acts. God just doesn't feel compassion towards us. God acts in compassion towards us. God brings us comfort when we cry out to him as a person, when we cry out to him within our family, when we cry out to him within our church, when we cry out to him within our community. God's comfort spreads out and spreads all over the place. God brings comfort. He's powerful enough to do so. He restores and he renews. God brings rescue. He's powerful enough to do so. He brings us out of difficult situations and redeems our, situ our, our situation. As in the words of that psalm, we, that psalm, hymn 12, that psalm we sang for Psalm 46 this morning. God calls us to understand this. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes. So often when troubles come our way, so often when we despair about God loving us or not loving us or caring, not, not, not caring for us, so often we get downcast. Our heads go down. Our eyes look to the ground. There's no comfort in the ground. Lift up your head. Look at the heavens. God's display, God's canvas that he paints a glorious picture upon. Look at the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out their starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. The Lord is the shepherd of the heavens. And he looks after the stars. The stars don't, don't, don't dictate to us. God dictates to the stars. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? That's God's answer to our complaints. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That's our God. That's who he is. That's the way he acts and the way he responds. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. This fabulous verse afterwards then says this, even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But, very big word in this circumstance, but, but those who hope in him, who hope in the Lord, but those who hope in him will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Wonderful. That's the way forward. That's God's restoring and renewing in our lives. That's God's renewing and restoring in our church. It's God's renewing and restoring when the, church, when the country begins again to open up to him. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Just very briefly as we finish this great phrase, these great phrases at the end. They will soar on wings like eagles, caught up in the presence of God, caught up in worship and praise, caught up in his word and his great and his strength and his service, caught up in the fellowship of his people. They'll soar on wings like eagles. 
It is something that God will do to us and give for us. It's not a daily experience, but it's once in a while, once in a while we experience it for the church, for the Christian, to soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You think that should be the other way around. We walk before we run, before we soar. No. Because we need God's power and presence in our lives in a real encounter with him. Renewing and restoring experience. That's soaring. And as a result of soaring on wings like eagles, we can then run God's paths and run with God's ways. And running, we can then walk in a determined and disciplined and continuous path with God for the rest of our days. Lord, please grant to each and all of us that our worries and our frettings and our scary times and our uncertainties, please grant to each and all of us that we lift up our heads. We we'll hope in the Lord. We we'll find you renewing our strength. And grant that in the light of all that you do in us, we'll soar on wings like eagles. We'll run and not grow weary. We'll walk and not be faint. Let's pray. Lord, grant us to be restored by you to that walking with you, to that running after you, to that soaring on wings as we worship you together. Catch us up Meet us in our need, and may the glory shine in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Norman. Such an encouraging chapter, and uh, thank you for unpacking it for us. And we practically place our hope in the Lord by daily bringing everything to him in prayer. So we're going to sing of that in hymn 627 as we remind ourselves of the friendship we have in Jesus. 627, let's stand to sing.
Let's remain standing and declare the reason for our hope in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Page 112 in our green books, page 48 in the large print. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's sit to pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, save the King. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. A collect for this third Sunday in Lent. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's join together in the third collect at morning prayer. Go before us. Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our intercessions this morning, we're going to use a call and response when I say, the Lord is my light and my salvation, please respond, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Gracious God, as we approach you in prayer, we're very aware of our own limitations, our own human frailty. So we thank you that Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in power. The Lord is my light and my salvation. We pray today for the people of the world. We pray that you would preserve the people of every nation from tyrants, that you would protect them in disaster and war and famine. And merciful God, as war continues to rage, in Ukraine and innocent lives are destroyed. We pray for the people there. We pray for those in Ukraine and in other places in the world who long for the day when they can live safe and free. 
Prince of Peace, intervene on behalf of your people, beating swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Lord, we pray today for our country. We pray that you would give wisdom to those who govern us. We pray that you would uh, cause them to act with integrity. We pray that you would keep safe those who protect us from danger, thinking particularly of the escalating tension here in our country. This week, as we remember St. Patrick, we thank you that you raised him up to bring those who were wandering in darkness and error to the true light and knowledge of your word. Grant that walking in that light, we too in this day may point people to Jesus, the light of the world. The Lord is my light and my salvation. We pray today for our own city, Belfast. We pray that you will heal the rifts and fear caused by years of violence and sectarianism. We pray for our community here. We pray for the local businesses who are giving employment to thousands in this area. We pray for our schools. Lord, would you protect our city's children? Would you give them lives of hope and joy? Lord, would you bless our teachers and headmasters and care assistants, those working in centers of education? Bless them as they seek to bless and inspire our children. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Lord, we pray for our church across Ireland. We pray for all different churches of all different flavors where they seek to lift up the name of Jesus. We pray also for our Church of Ireland. We pray for Bishop David. Lord, would you strengthen us? Would you rebuild us? Would you give us the energy and power of your Holy Spirit so that we may be mobilized to bring others new life and hope. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray that we would be those who turn to you for help and for healing instead of to the shallow comforts and superficial sources the world tries to give us. Lord, would we find ourselves rooted to you, the rock. Lord, would we cling to you and would we know you're strengthening and steadying when we are at risk of falling. Lord, would you keep drawing us into your presence when we are distracted and we feel hard to find. Lord, we pray particularly for those of us who feel that our way is disregarded by our God. Lord, would we hear your voice of comfort and encouragement this morning. Let's take a wee moment and pray for those who we know who maybe are sick or who are struggling in different ways. Those who maybe today would take up that plaintive cry of Israel and say, my way is disregarded by my God. Let's pray for them that they would know that God is near, that God cares, that God declares comfort over their lives. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Lord, today we pray for those who grieve. Eternal God, we thank you that your love is stronger than death. The Lord is my light and my salvation. We pray all these things through Christ, with Christ and in Christ. Let's join together in our closing hymn. It's hymn 529, 529. Thy hand 
Oh God has guided. Let's stand to sing. take our seats for a few notices before our closing prayer. A wee reminder um, that the Lent Prayer Initiative is continuing. Uh, uh, we're asking you to commit to pray for an hour on a particular day during Lent. So if you haven't been able to do that, can I encourage you just to add your name to the schedule on this little table on your way out. And you can also pick up a little prayer pointers on this yellow sheet called Lenten Prayer. So Please uh, do participate in that if you're able. Um, also encourage you to look at the transformations videos that the diocese are producing. You can find those on our Facebook page. Uh, the little stories, five minute stories from around the diocese of different transformations that God is bringing. I think they're very good. Prayer club is on Tuesday night, eight o'clock. Holy communion, Wednesday, 10 a.m. next door. And the sanctuary course for those who are doing it continues for another three weeks next door at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday night. There's no tots this week because of half, because of St. Patrick's Day, not because of half term. But instead of tots, 
The St. Patrick's Day celebrations with the diocese are happening in and around Down Patrick. So if you'd like to join with others in the diocese in Seoul and then Down Cathedral with the Bishop of Rwanda, the theme is reconciliation. Why don't you pick up a wee card on your way out? That's this Friday. Uh, the proceedings begin at 9.15 with Holy Communion in uh, the Seoul Church. So pick up those wee cards on the way out. Our uh, Castlereagh Scottish Country Dance Class are having a Cayley on Monday week, so not tomorrow, but the following Monday, March the 20th. It's at 7.45 p.m. There's food, there's dancing, it'll be a great night, um, and it is free. But in order to know how many people are coming, they've asked if you could pick up an invitation card, which is also on the little table on the way out, just in the porch area there, so they know how many are coming. So pick up the card if you're going uh, and do go along Monday week to the Cayley in our church halls. The Bells have organized a walk for all church family and friends suitable for all ages, young and old, on Saturday, March the 25th. So that's two weeks away at 11 a.m. Saturday, March the 25th at 11 a.m. Uh, meeting at Kinniger Car Park in Hollywood and a little walk there. If you want more information, talk to Jean Matchett or Anne Hamilton. So that's Saturday, March 25th, 11 a.m. walk. And the Bells have also organized an afternoon tea. This is a good one. For uh, ages 60 plus. So if you fit into that category, then you can go along for afternoon tea on Tuesday, April the 4th at 2 p.m. in the Kennedy Rooms. So the ladies are producing afternoon tea for anyone who's aged 60 plus um, in the Kennedy Rooms, Tuesday, April 4th. On your way out today, would you pick up one of these little sheets? It gives what's happening over Holy Week and on Easter on the reverse, various activities going on during Holy Week. So pick up that little sheet on your way out and it will tell you everything you need to know. You can put it on your fridge and all will be revealed. But apart from that, I think that's everything we want to say. Let's stand then for our closing prayer. Lovely to see you today. May God bless you this week in whatever you get up to. And uh, particularly on St. Patrick's Day at the end of the week. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. So may the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us. Christ before us. Christ in us. Christ over us. And may this be our way this day and forevermore.